What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Mehran Podcast. My guest today is Keegan Kilbride. In the past decade, Keegan has established himself as one of the top pro skiers in the film world. With his segments in Level 1 movies, in other projects like HG Ski's Eat the Guts, in 2018's X Games Real Ski where he won the bronze medal, and in his self-produced project Slim to None in 2021. This December, Keegan dropped Video Part, a two-year street project that shows why he's considered one of the best street skiers in the world. In this episode, we talked about Keegan's life in the past two years since our last talk for episode 24. We talked about his move from Maine to LA and his current work at Stepped Studios. We discuss his ski sponsor move joining the K2 team. Even though Keegan is focused on filming, we also take some time to talk about the many events he's done, including X Games Knucklehuck, Do Tour, Level 1 Rail Jam, and Super Unknown 20. We also chat about Keegan joining the Monster Team and the story on how the team up came to life. We then close off the episode going into detail in his new incredible short film, Video Part. This episode is presented by K2 Skis. Founded over 60 years ago, K2 is a legendary brand with deep roots in free skiing. Growing up, so many of my favorites were on K2. Pep Fujas, Sean Pettit, Clayton Villa, Charlie Yeager, and so many more. And what can we say about their current team? Possibly the best one out there. Colby Stevenson, Carl Fosfed, Anna Siegel, Sam Cush, Manon Loshi, Burke Irving, Keegan Kilbride, Yuna Kangas, and so many more. Not to mention, K2 continues to collaborate with outside brands and artists to keep it fresh. Some of them include Brain Dead, Sam Friedman, and The Grateful Dead. Some of my favorite pair of skis I ever owned were K2s, like my 2006 Fugitives that helped me step up my game in the park, or my 2014 Shredditors that allowed me to enjoy some real good POW days. To me, free skiing was always about every aspect of the sport, from the parks to the streets to the backcountry and beyond. And it's so nice to see K2 still support every side of our sport. Check out their full skis lineup at k2skis.com or at your local ski shop. Support companies who support skiing. Support K2 Skis. Big shout out to the patrons on Patreon. Will Cameron, Raf Diaz, Laurent Olivier Martin, Ryan Bruninghaus, Sam Chef, Holden Baldassi, Wyatt Looney, Nick Crockett, Brendan Hart, Kyle Decker, and Jason Harrens. Shout out to you guys. Also, big thanks to the sponsors of this episode, K2 Skis, Axis Board Shop, Plank's Clothing, and Dickens Restaurants. Let's go! Mr. Keegan Kilbride, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, man. Happy to do it. Happy to be here. It's fun to talk to you. Second one, last time we talked was two years ago exactly when you were dropping Slim to None. That's right. A lot has changed in your life since then. Yeah, I, I guess so. Not not so much though. If you're in my brain, not so much has changed. Well, last <laughs> time we talked, you were skiing on Armada. Oh, you had you had no logo on your on your hat. You were living out east. You were coaching. Now I'm talking to you. You're in the stepped offices in LA, living out west. Tell me about that that um, change in your life, <laughs> yeah. on your where you live, all that. <laughs> yeah. I but, guess well, first saying. about about the the step life. What's been going on with you and your your living out west? Yeah, that is funny when you say it like that. It seems like a lot has changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's good, man. I mean, I think when we did talk last, like, I mean, living out here and working with these dudes has always been something that. I've talked about with these guys, you know, like I never went to school in Boulder. I kind of just, you know, I spent a lot of time there and, and Martini and Riley and, and Clayton and Chuck. And I mean, all the guys that live out here, but they're a bit older than me. You know, they're like a five year gap or, or more, um, but close enough that I knew them in Boulder. So we'd hang and, and I'm kind of the same style skier as them. So we were always just friends. And I was like the younger guy living out in, in Boulder and Colorado and shit like that. So then when I was back in Maine or or wherever the hell I was living, we always talked about it. And, and I had plans. I had plans to move out here and, and pursue these um, these goals. 
forever. You know, I, I, we were always talking about it. And then finally, finally, like whatever happened in May and happened and, and I pulled the trigger and, and moved out here and then just kind of got started, rolled right up and, uh, and was working before I even moved into my house. So, so what's it, what has been your job since you moved out? Uh, I mean, I started out just like, just like PA stuff, you know? PA is just like produ- like production assistant on different commercial shoots and um which is basically I mean anything from like it it depends on the scale of the project but you know you can be getting coffee or you can all of a sudden be like pulling focus. Mm-hmm. And and a good PA is just like doing whatever the hell needs to needs to happen. Yeah, that's uh, the the ski film background which is that's exactly it when you're doing a movie is like whatever needs to be done needs to be done. If right. you're skiing at a spot, get your shot. And if it's someone else's turn, maybe film the shot or, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like you never, you never really know. And that's, and that's nice. And it's good to work with your friends at least too. It's like, uh, sometimes there's like a mentality out here that, that I didn't quite understand, you know, from, from kids that like grew up in with like the Hollywood ethos. <laughs> it's like, well, um, Keegan, I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> I'm like, if Chuck, if Chuck's directing it, it's like, tell me what, tell me what to do, man. <laughs> I'll do whatever. So now you've been working there for how long? What, when was the move for you to go from the East Coast to, uh, to be a surfer boy out West? <laughs> to be a surfer boy. I've been living out here for like a year and a half. Uh, nice. Yeah. I just moved out here and I did the PA shit and I, and I still will, you know, just to make money. Um, yeah. And it's fun. It's fun just like learning, learning how this stuff goes. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much it. I don't I don't really have like dreams of being a uh, a lifelong PA. But yeah, I guess the goal is to to step up in that field of things. Do you have any specific jobs in that industry that that you're eyeing out in the future? Uh yeah, sure. I mean, like more on the behind the camera, in front of the you know, as a director, producer. What's the what's the Keegan dream? In this field, I'm not like a behind the camera guy, just because it gets so technical. Um, yeah. You know, I I know how to operate the cameras. I know how to operate, and I know I know how to operate any of these cameras. I, I suppose, but I'm not like the technical camera op. Um, mm-hmm. These people are like mad scientists, and and the and the DP is like the director, of, like any director of photography that gets work out here. I mean, these guys are so goddamn talented. It's like I could never. I could never do that. I'd rather rely on them. Um, I just, I want to make, I like writing and I like writing, the, you know, I, I, I just want to make the work that I want to make. Um, and I'd rather rely on them to, to make it look pretty, you know, yeah. so I, I want to hire those guys. And so, yeah, I guess if there's like a, a goal in mind for like a position, it'd be like a director or whatever. But, but that just means like, making the content that I want to make, you know, like you've been directing films and, and, you know, anyone that makes a project, I guess, can, can slap a director title on themselves. Well, that's, <laughs> but, what, that's what it is at some point. Then it's just a matter of to what extent do you see your role as a director? Right. Right. You no, know, a lot of times, uh, in the bigger productions that you do, a director will have a really precise role. Whereas in skiing, it pretty much encompasses every fucking thing. Yeah, is it you or the skier, or is it you and like a six hundred and fifty person crew? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the director in ski shit there. will often be also director of photography and editor, and you right. know, and producer sometimes, and you know, one man army. Right. That's how it goes in ski films for sure. Yeah. Um, and that, and it all definitely, it all relates. So that it's fun to come, it's fun to work on some of these projects with that kind of background for sure. Yeah. And how's the LA life been outside of uh, work for someone who's been in East Coast? You grew up in Portland, right? Yeah, Portland, Maine. Yeah, Portland, Maine. You lived a few years in Colorado. Mm-hmm. How's the LA life? LA's good. I think I've always been like pretty good at. Uh, I don't think it's like absent-mindedness, but in a way, I suppose it it, it may be conceived like that, but. I, I enjoy anywhere I live. You know, if I if I choose to live somewhere, it's like where this this is where I'm at, and 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 we're gonna have fun here. Um, yeah. 
so I moved out here and was like, all right, I gotta, I've never really surfed before, but Clayton's my friend. So I'm going to, he's a big surfer. I was like, I'm going to be a pro surfer now. <laughs> so, so now I just surf every day and I'm like out there fucking training, <laughs> you know, like working on my left turns, right turns and all this stuff. Yeah. And obviously that's a joke. I'm never going to be a pro surfer, but it's just funny that that's how people like us tend to approach things. There's some surfing that goes out on the East Coast. You know, a lot of people from Quebec go to Hampton Beach. Dude, this and... year, especially like this summer has been popping off the last six months in New England has been insane surf. So were you already a surfer boy uh, out east or it started really more out west? No, I wasn't because um, I guess I just didn't have like friends that surfed back home. You know, like, that's kind of what it takes to get you into something like that. I, I, I never, no one ever dragged me out there to do it. And I think when like the waves are good in Maine, most of the time, it's like when there's snow on the ground. So if there's snow on the ground, I'm skiing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I never did it, but now I'm like, I'm checking the waves on Surfline in Maine, like every day. And I'm like, damn, this shit looks so good. I almost want to like fly home to New England just to surf. (laughs) But, uh, but no, no, I, I never did it growing up. Um, I just did it like a kook when I moved out to Venice. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I'm a surfer now. (laughs) Such an asshole. (laughs) And now it's time for a first sponsor break. Planks Clothing is sponsoring the podcast for another season and I'm really grateful. Their new 2324 winter collection just landed online. Feel good and charge hard in all mountain gear you can depend on. Rider driven features, durable recycled fabric and individual style. It's really mountain ready gear you can live in. On my end, I've tested that in the past three seasons and I only have great things to say. From filming street with the boys to skiing in the park and everywhere in between. Planks Clothing is now shipping to the U.S. and Canada, so check them out online at planksclothing.com. Support companies who support skiing, support Planks Clothing. It seems like surfing really has a hook for skiers. You know, as you said, I've been talking to Clayton also, and he's been really into surfing since uh, his skiing days are kind of over. Well, let's say, you know, went from pro skier and now surfing replaced that for him. Yeah, I mean, Clayton's been like, Clayton's like a surfer die. Like, I mean, he grew up on Block Island surfing, like, since right. he was a child. And he's he's actually, like, really good at it. <laughs> yeah. He, he cares a lot about it. And but. there's a lot of people I know who, as they grew older, really got into, you know, were core free skiers and got really into surfing. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of making uh, pow trips in the winter, it's more like going down south and doing some surfing um what do you think uh makes or maybe for you but for skiers also in general like what do you think uh is the the like the hook between free skiing and surfing yeah i mean if you wanted to like look real deep into it i suppose it's like there are a bunch of similarities i guess like i mean you wake up early you know wake up at 5 a.m go out there paddle out sometimes it's going to be like terrible just to even paddle out and then you, you have, like, an awful time out there. Waves are just subpar, but then you catch one good one. And then you walk back to the truck, and it's like, all right, that was a sick morning. That happens a lot of times with, like, skiing street, too. You know, you wake up way too early, and you have a terrible time, but then you get a good shot. <laughs> it's like, Fuck yeah. And it's, like, all worth it, and then the rest of your day is nice, you know? Yeah. You piss yourself off enough in the morning, and then the rest of your day is pretty easy. Yeah, you just need uh, one good run or one good hit, and it was worth it. But I, I, I should say, like, I'm, I'm not the one to talk about surfing. I like it for how I like it, but I'm absolutely like a kook <laughs> in the yeah. surfing world, you know. But I'll still go out. Like, if the waves are way too big, I'll still just paddle out and get smashed, you know, like knowing that I'm going to get smashed. And yeah. I love that shit because that's kind of how I ski sometimes. I'm like, this is going to end up so bad. But you do it and you see how hard you can fall. And I love that about surfing because you can see how hard you can fall and, and you're probably going to walk away from it. That might be something that applies for someone who has gone really good in skiing. Whether, you know, not necessarily being a pro, but, you know, once you've done uh, big jump tricks or big rail tricks. And if you do those, then necessarily to get there, you've eaten shit a couple of times. Yeah. And then that kind of teach you that kind of a good lesson for surfing where whenever you'll eat shit surfing, 
you're kind of used to it, you know that you'll get up and it'll all be good. Yeah, me and Josh uh, Bishop were actually just talking about it yesterday. It's like what, you know, kind of talking about the methods or whatever of like what do we do when you come back from a street trip or like street trip, I'm, you know, I'm used to just like waking up every single day and I just, just knowing that I'm going to do like some real scary shit, you no. know, <laughs> it's like something I, I really want to do, but I just, it's going to be terrifying and dangerous or whatever. And you do that for like two weeks straight and then you just come back to LA and you wake up and everything's yeah. like fine. I'm going to go like sit in an office and work on on my computer. It's like that doesn't my brain goes insane like that doesn't really work out like something bad is gonna happen <laughs> you know like i'm gonna do something dumb if i don't like get this kind of energy out so if the waves are big i'll just paddle out there and get smashed and then be like all right nice this is there's an adrenaline withdrawal kind of yeah absolutely i feel that there's always that and that's something you just gotta kind of conquer whether it's like just running 20 miles or hopping on a bike or surfing too much or, you know, yeah. you got to get that out. Make sure you so, keep moving. Yeah. You just got to keep moving. That's a big part about living in LA. You just got to, you got to like find your thing. And you mentioned running and biking. Is that something you've been into or mostly surfing? Yeah. Running big time. I, I've always just kind of been a big runner, but uh, yeah, it's just, okay. I wouldn't see you as that guy, but that's cool to hear. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not on. Uh, I'm not on Strava, but no, <laughs> I kind of just. I kind of just run. Dude, you're you're not running if it's not on Strava. Yeah, I know, man. I know that's what I've heard, but turns out you can. <laughs> turns out you can just leave your phone at home and and see how far you can run, and then come back and take a shower. Okay, I'll try that. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. So getting back into the skiing side, la since the last time we, we talked, you had a big uh, change sponsor-wise. Um, you signed with K2. I did. Dude, congrats. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. That was sick. K2 is a badass brand. Tell me about that. What led to it? Um, how's the move been? How are you liking them, them K2s? K2, I mean, the skis themselves are great. Um, they they feel they feel perfect. I don't know. I'm, I'm a bad like judge on. I've never like. I don't know if I've ever actually disliked to ski. <laughs> you know, like you're, I'm a bad, you're easy. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty easy, but um, the like actual sponsor change came pretty easily too. It was like Dan Valer was working at Armada, and he was just my homie. I've always kind of like skied. I've always made sure that like the team managers or whatever for companies I ride for are like my friends. Mm -hmm. um, just because I mean the amount of money involved, it's like it's I I want to I want to be representing people I you know people I'm friends with. So Dan Valer left. So you're saying that with the money involved, you're saying you guys are not making millions. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's like dude all right if you're gonna give me one dollar i'm gonna ride for my friend instead of like your two dollars <laughs> whatever yeah. it's like it doesn't matter to me so uh yeah dan valer left because he got like a job with ken block which is badass i was like all right sick dude later and then that same week uh kai Krapelos, who like one of my best friends started working for k2 and my contract ended right when Kai got the job for K2 and it just happened in like the same day. And Kai was like, yo, I know what's going on with you. You want to start riding for us? And I was like, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Cause I didn't know the new, I didn't know the new TM that was coming in for Armada, you know, like after Dan left. So I was like, yeah, yeah. no, this is great. So you were on his bucket list. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, I was like, I was like the first thing that happened when Kai got in the, in the, I don't know about bucket list, but yeah, he, uh, I was definitely on the radar. So that's a good, um, compliment, I guess, to have when someone gets on a new job and you're kind of the first one to get a call being like, yo, you want to join us? Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, that's cool. You know, didn't go unnoticed. And I, and I love Kai. Like we've, you know, we've talked about that shit for so long. So it was, it's, it's cool that he actually took the job and, 
and he wanted to do it. You know, he, he Kai got that job, and he's like, dude, I he's a street skier. Like Kai's got some of the nastiest street clips that will ever be shot. Like yeah. Kai, Kai's a Kai should be on the podium for like street skiing, even if he slept on like some of his clips are are out of this world. Um, so he knows the game and he was like, dude, we need to get you a proper contract and it worked, you know, right away. That's, that's sick. Did you ever film street with Kai? Cause you guys were both in level one movies for a couple years straight. No, I never actually did. Um, not like, not together, not on like the same trip ever. Like Kai would always have shots and segments with like Will Wesson and you would have yeah. shots with Will Berman. Yeah, I mean, similar guy to me. Like, I did my own thing. He did his own thing. And I've never really shot with anyone besides Will Berman. Really? Like, yeah, I mean, I don't think, I'm besides like the HG boys, like when we did the Eat the Guts thing, I've never shot a part with anyone except for Ethan Timmons, Will Berman, and Cam Willis. I've made like nine or 10 segments in a row with the same three guys. I don't really like to go on trips on like trips with anyone else. That's crazy. Yeah. I just know how we operate and we, we stick to our own thing. You know, I don't yeah. like skiing with other people sometimes out there in the street. I'm scared sometimes watching. <laughs> I mean, it's like we got our own thing. We do like, we're just best friends and we go out there and do our thing. And why mix it up with, you know, why, why complicate things sometimes. Yeah, when you've got a good formula going. Yeah, yeah. And now it's time for another sponsor break. Dickens is a family-owned fast food restaurant chain with 12 locations in the Montreal region. Close to 70 years after opening their first restaurant on Montreal's Boulevard Pineuf, Dickens is still focused on what matters. The same great menu with great food made with quality ingredients. I've said it, I'm a Dickens super fan. And many people ask me what's my go-to. I have to say it's their famous Wally burger. A double cheeseburger with slices of pepperoni. It's so good. Dickens is now selling their sauce in their restaurants and in many metro grocery stores throughout Quebec. Plus, they've put a bunch of great recipes to go along with it on their website at dickenssauce.com. Also big news, in 2024, Dickens will be opening a new location on the south shore of Montreal in Belle Oeil. Support companies who support skiing, support Dickens restaurants. Yeah, it feels like there's a lot of that going on with them. Um, you know, for a couple of years, it was Brady and Phil Casabon. And now Brady has just released this third movie with Mango. And, you know, when you have a good duo of filmer and skier, just keep it going. Don't. Uh... Yeah, there is like the thing. I mean, for this upcoming year, I do want to do like maybe kind of do like a couple features or something. I don't want to like. I don't want to like get out of the ski game and and think back and be like, damn, I actually never like appeared in anyone else's movie or like I never like shot with anyone else besides my best friend. Like maybe I should like, so I think this year I'm going to like pop on a trip with like, or like get Quinn on a trip or like get, you know, McKenna or, or just like some, some friends, you know, like actually kind of mm -hmm. like involve more people than just myself. Yeah. Um, Cause I do, I do want to do that before I leave, before I leave the game. <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to, I want to do a couple features and stuff, not just like solo albums, my whole fucking career. Well, th there's a time for all of that. Yeah. And, um, aside from the K2 move, one thing that I wanted to, to touch on with you is you've always been kind of a, well, not kind of, you've always been a film guy. Like everyone knows you from your segments, whether it's from level one or eat the guts or, you know, slim to none. Mm -hmm. um, but you've been kind of active also on the comp side in the past two years. The comp side. Well, we seen you pop off at knuckle hug and then, <laughs> yeah. and then at do tour. And then if you consider that a pop off. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, uh, well, tell me about knuckle hug. I, I, anyways, the the three comps were Knuckle Hug, Dew Tour, and then the Level One Rail Jams. So mm -hmm. you know, competing here and there. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the the Knuckle Hug thing. I mean, those competitions are always just like a blast. You know, you you get invited to something like that. It's like, it's more about like I'm not a slope style skier or anything like that. Like, but I do know that like I got a couple tricks on a knuckle. Like I love skiing park. I think I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> so. 
I, you get invited to something like that. It's like, yeah, hell yeah, I'll go like see my friends. And I just know you go out to an event like that and I get to hang out with kids that like I haven't seen in so long, you know? Yeah. Um, so you're just hanging out with your friends and, and doing some skiing on a mountain. It's perfect. And, but you know, there's always that joke of guys that compete versus guys that film. And let's say you never had that, you know, you're saying you're not a slope style skier. So you've known for a long time that you weren't going to be on an X games as a slope style skier. You've competed for X games, but it was real ski, which is, you know, you're not in Aspen. It's kind of a different event and you want a medal for that. Um, but is there kind of that inner child going off when you get that invite to go at knuckle hook? How much does that play in saying like, oh, you'll be on a, on the big show with everyone? Yeah, I'm sure. Like if I got the invite maybe years earlier or something, mm. um, maybe I would have like experienced that. But I think when I got the, I was like, I was honored for sure. You know? Right. Um, And that's all it was. You know, I was like, nice. Thank, thanks, guys, for thinking of me. <laughs> you know, like, More of a recognition. Sure gonna, yeah, like, for sure I'm going to come and this this will be fun. It's a good feeling to be invited to something like that. But I wasn't like, you know, holy shit. Like, this is, yeah. <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know, I was like, word, these are all like my friends. Like, I go up to the top of the course. It's not like I'm 12 years old and Dumont's on TV. It's like I go up to the top of the course and it's like Colby or like whatever like my friends who i've known since i was 10 years old it's like nice like yeah we're just we're gonna go do like some nose butter <laughs> on a knuckle <laughs> this, this is fun <laughs> cool. at that point in 2022 you know you blew up in 2016 with super unknown so at that point it was it has been six years since you were doing you know the best segments with level one and all that so Words. it's not as if you're not you're a newcomer in that in the game well and also like maybe what people don't know like i used to compete slope style all the time like i was doing grand prix and and all that shit and doing pretty well so like i've known you know and all the, at least the american riders like we've been friends since we we're like literally 12 years old you know like i've i've been skiing with colby and alex and and all these guys who are like the best in the game like we've kn we've all known each other for so long so right. it's not like it's not a big deal you know Tell me what was your approach to knuckle hook, because you kind of know that if you want to win that comp, you got to go really intense. Yeah, <laughs> you know some yeah. pe some people. There's always uh, some people that are going fucking all in. Yeah. Uh, what was your mindset going in? Were you uh, yeah. <laughs> like, because you you know what it takes. I, I know you got what it takes, but then it's a matter of like, do you how bad do you want to hook that knuckle? Yeah, I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I, we were just having fun i mean like we were talking about with my film crew like or like yeah. you know my, my homies like when i went there i went and i brought ethan cam and will so like we just kind of rolled up there with like the same my same friend group that i've been with all year and we were like dude we're just gonna like have have a blast here i was like all right you're my coach you're my whatever <laughs> so we got them all like access to the course and we were just having fun yeah because you also competed with will Dude, yeah. So Will got like the last minute invite. Someone dropped out. I think I think B Dog, I think Phil got COVID or something. Like a bunch of people weren't allowed to come. A handful of guys weren't allowed to come because of COVID stuff. So Will, yeah, Berman was supposed to just like be hanging. And then all of a sudden he ended up competing. And that was a blast. So we were just like, you know, messing around. Um and that's kind of how I always ski the best too, is just mess around and good things happen especially in yeah. the park i'm never like if i'm in if i'm on a ski mountain nothing's ever like that calculated anymore i'm like very calculated if i'm in the streets but if i'm on a ski hill it's i never nothing good ever comes from thinking too much <laughs> yeah that's what i was about to ask like i'm guessing it must be calculated in the streets because you never go to a spot you know yolo it's always like you have a certain approach in mind a certain trick that's in mind Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a diff it's it's a different game. It's a different sport. <laughs> it's a completely different sport. Yeah. Uh, talking about going in the mountain and being loose, there was um a pose that really made me laugh. Going back into your stuff, I don't know if it's from last year or this year, but you're just seeing like a annual park day. 
it's park shots and the, the caption is annual park day. <laughs> what's, your, what's your relationship to park skiing nowadays? Are you really going on the, in the park only like once or twice a year? What's, a, what's your situation with park skiing? I think I know the clip you're talking about. And at that, in that year, yeah, it was like the only, it was like a once a year thing. Because there was that thing with Step at some point where they were like, I, I never ski park. You know, yeah, I'm not. I like, ski so much in this in the street. I film so much in the street that I never have time to. Even if I wanted to, I don't have time to film to ski in the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was that's kind of like on another level. But I think I was just like, yeah, I was just kind of in Maine working a bunch, and and I wasn't like, and if I was skiing on a mountain, it was just Sugarloaf, and I'm like ripping, you know, mogul trails and. You know, like just like skiing groomers and just like ripping sugar loaf and like hitting whatever down rail they had set up or something. So it was always fun to just like, you know, I'd go out to Colorado and ski copper for two days. And I was like, sick, this was, was park skiing. I remember this. <laughs> like, and it was, and it all like came right back. And so. And now it's time for another sponsor break. Access Board Shop has been dedicated to free skiing since its inception in 2002. At a time when some people and brands were still looking down on free skiing, Axis believed in it fully. After 20 years of supporting athletes, movies, competitions, events, and so much more, Axis is still going strong. Above all, Axis is a ski shop where you'll find everything you need for skiing, snowboarding, or skateboarding. Check them out in store in Saint Sauveur or online at AxisBoutique.com. Support companies who support skiing, support Axis Board Shop. Because the park is so good out west that when you get back east, you're kind of bummed and not really hyped to ski some parks. Uh, not that for me. No? I, no, I never really felt that way. I mean, the parks are obviously a lot better, but any time that I was like skiing, I, I was, I was having like the same amount of fun, I guess. I can have fun anywhere on skis. Like it, I still say that like Sugarloaf is the best mountain to ski. I don't care if there's a park there or not. It's like, I'm um, I'm having just as much fun skiing over there than I am at like Subai or something. It's like it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm, uh, it's just it's all the same. Like what I what I care about is like street skiing, and so other than that, like if I'm skiing on a mountain, it's just we're just messing around, you know. Yeah. And what's your uh, your go to out west? Do you ski? What's your hill to go ski? Is it Big Bear? Um, out in California. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Big Bear. Um, I only went there one time last year, but I'll probably go there more this year, maybe. And I guess Mammoth too, like in the springtime, but the Mammoth is kind of scary during the winter. There's like a lot of snow and stuff, <laughs> a lot of weather. But <laughs> it's crazy me. though, to go back to your post, there, there's a post from you skiing on July 4th, hitting big yeah. jumps at Mammoth. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, especially for us uh, East Coast skier, where the season ends in March. Or you yeah, know, I'm kind of exaggerating, but you know, it ends up quickly. Yeah, no my my mountain skiing season starts in like March. Kind of, <laughs> that's like when my season starts, <laughs> and I'll just go to Mammoth a couple times. But skiing Mammoth in like November, December, January, February is like so gnarly. You know, you're you're liable to get like stuck up there in a snowstorm or something. <laughs> it's like it's crazy up there so i'd uh i'd rather just like go out to copper or something and like you know crash with some buddies in in colorado and, and ski out there in december um because it's kind of like the same i mean i could fly to colorado in three hours or drive to mammoth for six hours it's like it's easier just to fly somewhere yeah i'm five minutes from the airport where i live yeah um so it's much easier just to fly somewhere I don't really have like right. a home. I don't. I don't have like a home mountain. Um, and talking about the 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 couple comps you did, um, and again the same vibe of having fun, being with your friends. How was the street style for you? I talked it a bit with uh, Colby Stevenson, who won. Um, yeah, you know that whole thing of having us. I thought it was really dope, at least for a viewer, having a slope style of rails. It was yeah. like a first kind of. Mm -hmm. um how was that for you it was great it was exactly kind of what i what i expected rolling into it <laughs> you know i i knew uh i knew it was gonna go down i was like holy shit this is like a slope style event it's not it used to kind of be 
just like a jumble of funny features on like Main Street and Breck. Yeah. So like anyone could win. Um, and that's when I won it. I think I won. I won like two years in a row, and it was just like it was like pole jams and like weird stuff, you know. And then I went this year. I was like, oh, it was like a slope style event, like, <laughs> and like Colby and Alex. Are, it's like okay, this is this is what these guys are like training their runs. It's like I did a different run every time I went down the hill, and it was just like a park. It was like a it was like a down rail, down rail, flat bar, flat bar. <laughs> I was like sick. <laughs> all right whatever but um it was fun you know again i mean same kind of vibe it was just fun to go out there and i went out there just to kind of be part of this it's fun to go out there and just like be part of the scene you know i get to see those guys so i so rarely these days so it's mm-hmm. fun to just like go out there and, and hang with my friends that i don't get to see anymore so yeah so how much you said you had three runs and every time you were doing something different how much were you preparing a run or were you just going uh, with the vibe on the moment? No, I mean, I definitely like prepared a run, but it, it's different. It's different watching like those guys operate, like their slope style skiers, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and I tell was, me like, how different. The robotics of it. <laughs> like, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, it's just not, it's just a different way than I ski. If, I, if I'm in Colorado, if I'm on copper, it's just a different like way of skiing you know it's not actually the the run that i find i kept falling because my ski was popping off because i just got back from a street trip and my binding was broken mm. and my ski kept flying off and finally i get up to the top and colby has like the same size foot and he's like keegan just fucking take my it so i wore colby's skis for my final run and then landed and that was dope <laughs> And those had a monster. I just remember, like those had a monster sticker on it. He he had poachers, and I've never skied the poachers before. They're like way stiffer. And the video is on my Instagram somewhere. But and I landed the run. Boom, got down to the bottom. I was like, sick. I want that sticker on my ski. Like, what, what do I got? <laughs> what do I got to do to get that thing? <laughs> That's when monster approached you, saying like, "Hey, that was a nice sticker." No, that would have been a better story. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a nice run. Like switch lip two nose under yeah. into four on back two. Mm-hmm. Like a good slope style skier that you are. Exactly. Those are Colby skis, though. I put on the poachers, dude. And yeah. And um, I put on the comp skis. <laughs> a transfer, kind of jumping from one rail to another or from one jump to another rail. Yeah. And then back swap two out on the big wall ride. Yeah. Yeah, the transfer thing, that's like a clear example of like how I think and how comp skiers think, where it's like, it was just a jump from, it was like one jump to another rail. And I just thought it was like badass because no one else could do it. But everyone was like, dude, you're not going to like score any points on, like no one cares about that. And I was like, well, I do. (laughs) So I kept doing it and it was like a straight slide or whatever. And I just like kept it in like my run or whatever, like, and, but it clearly just like didn't didn't work (laughs) you know that's something that makes up for a great street shots just a nice gap to rail yeah i mean if you're gonna watch a straight slide might as well be a big gap like yeah so you knew that it wasn't gonna score but you were just like hey that's what i want (laughs) to do i don't care it felt good like to do it yeah so whatever yeah whatever feels good yeah and Lastly, on the the other comp that we saw you, you won the level one rail jam. Yeah, in Bear. Yeah. So congrats on that. And also, you got the one of the gnarliest bales I've seen in years. Well, that was pretty bad. What happened? <laughs> God um, damn. Yeah, that was so embarrassing. <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, I was just. Yeah, I was just skiing, and I I knew, like, I had already won, and it was, like, the last, like, I didn't even have to do that, but I was doing something that I thought was pretty chill. I was just going to do, like, a switch tails, too, onto this, like, but I was skiing these 194s. 194? Yeah, they're 194 and, like, 118 underfoot. Like, And how tall are you? I'm like five eleven, six feet. Like they're they're like big, big skis. Um, That's long. Because I was just like being a kook, <laughs> and, <laughs> and those are like the only skis I brought up to bear. 
and I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to use these in the rail jam. And I was definitely like getting made fun of the whole time <laughs> like for running up there with pass keys. But so I was just doing like a switch tails too. And which is like a pretty normal trick forgetting that there's like an extra nine inches on my tail. So I went to do a switch tails too, hit my tails like, cause I didn't clear them and then just like tacoed so hard. <laughs> that was the definition of a taco. It was so bad. And it's funny because I've broken the left, these left, like the left side of my rib cage. I've broken these ribs so many times. And Cam Willis is at the bottom. He flew out just to like hang because he knew I was going. Anytime I go skiing on a mountain, Cam Willis flies out. He lives in New York City and it's like he just hears that I'm going up to a ski mountain. So he flies out and just to hang. That's dope. And we got him the job of like throwing cash to people when they land tricks. So he's like all fired up. He's got free drinks going. <laughs> but he just, he saw me fall and he was like, oh yeah, seen that before. Like bro- broke a bunch of ribs. And Did you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, these things are like so fragile. Like I just, I, I t- it's like a magnet, dude. They're like, they're like Fuck. magnetic. I just smash them and then they break. But Cam, like, didn't even flinch. You know, everyone else was so shook. And Cam was just like, oh, yeah, seen that. <laughs> Damn. But did at that point, do you even go to the hospital for that? Or you're just like, well, I'll need nah. to chill out for a month? Yeah, there's nothing you can do. You, like, I mean, as long as, like, you you kind of just do, like, the internal organ check. And yeah, after that, there's nothing you can do for those. Unless you're, like, protruding or something crazy. You kind of just, it's just rest. So Right. Yeah, that shot is so funny because, ah, oh, dude, it's rough. But you come in, <laughs> lip lip on, nose tap, two out, super clean. Come in with the Keegan confidence where everything's going well, and then you take. There's, it's weird. It's as if you don't even pop. You just clip your tails, and oh man, the dive to <laughs> your face. It's heavy. Yeah, the face was fine. I mean, it was all fine. Like, I got back up. I knew exactly what... When you've, when you've done that so many times, like, I just got up and I was like, God damn it. Like, I was, I was just so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> but does it knock the wind out of you? Or what's the... How much uh, does... Because it looks like it hurts. Yeah, I'm sure the wind knock... Yeah, I'm sure you, you get the wind knocked out of you. I kind of forget. You know, you just you just sit there for a second and, and gather yourself. <laughs> you know, yeah. gather your emotions. The, the, the hit is more on your ego. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Always is. <laughs> Fuck. So you said at that point you knew you were going to win. Um, no, or you I knew mean, you I, won. I not say I, what do you mean? I was going to win, but like I, I had a feeling, you know, just watching yeah. other people. Like. You you felt good that you, you had the best uh, performance? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I landed a couple of things that whatever other people didn't. Yeah. Yeah. But, and it, it's a, it's dope that level one put those together because it's really winning cool. a four thousand dollar cash prize for a rail jam in twenty twenty three is kind yeah. of a, a trip back in time. Yeah, that's so sick. Yeah, no, that's huge. They did so many. St- how many stops did they do too? Like three, five. three or four, four. Yeah, word. That's that's sick. And the bear one yeah. is great. Because were you uh, too young, or did you ever do the war war of rails? I did do it in that video. I'm wearing a War Rails bib. Like, oh like shit! That's what it is. That's what that jersey is. Yeah. Again, I get it. Just I was getting made fun of that entire weekend because <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing like this stupid basketball jersey, um, which also had a monster logo on it. And I was like, maybe if I wear this. <laughs> but, there, there was a time when wearing a basketball jersey was dope. It was sick, right? I don't know. It, I thought it was sick. But the last oh, yeah, time, that... it was like the last time I had been to Bear was when I was like like fifteen or sixteen, and I went out to War Rails, and I got that jersey, and then I like I've lost every bib I've ever had, but for some reason I've kept that one, and then I was like, all right, I'm doing a competition at Bear, I'm gonna fucking wear this thing. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are you doing wearing a bib? Like we're not doing the bib thing, and I was like, well, I I am, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm number forty seven. <laughs> <laughs> bib 47 dropping yeah exactly i was like actually just like stealing the radio and calling my job that was sick <laughs> um and what was your uh experience back in the day with war of rails 
were you kind of too young to to get results at that time or how did that go i got sixth place dude it was like oh nice like my best contest result ever i'm the most I guess proud you... of that <laughs> <laughs> more than your x games medal yeah absolutely man fuck i did a back six um that that contest was wild though like it was, i did but yeah like i was so young i didn't know any of those guys it's funny like thinking back we talk about it all the time now like all those guys are like my good friends now but i just remember like there's like one member like standing at the drop in and sean jay tells me to drop like to like guinea pig this up row so i did and i like cleared it fine and then garai drops in behind me and like goes so big and shatters his pelvis and has to get helicopter lifted out of there and i was the guy that guinea pigged it and he like followed me into it and i'm like 15 and they're all like pro skiers like quote unquote whatever so they all know each other and i just kind of like scoot away like jesus man. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for following me like hope you're hope you're okay <laughs> but yeah everything turned out yeah Kiraya Kiraya's a beast and he, he got back into it but yeah on the spot That's weird because usually if someone's following you and you get the good speed, they should get it also. I probably weighed like 75 pounds though, you know, <laughs> I got that. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, you were kind of made for that setup because mm -hmm. whatever else wasn't a setup to do technical tricks per se. It was more insanely big features and trying to survive. Yeah, I know. I wish I could ski it today. I would have done a lot better, but... Yeah, LJ won that year doing like a double cork off a snowbank. And I just remember really? being so bummed. I was like, this motherfucker didn't even hit a rail. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> Two years later, we're friends and I'm I'm giving him a hard time about it. But yeah. yeah, no, that was fun. And yeah, before we get into your your film project, another thing I wanted to chat on was Super Unknown. You won Super Unknown in 2016. Yeah, is that, yeah, with the f formula of um, f you know, the classic finalists getting invited there, being a boss and winning, and then mm -hmm. this year you went back for the 20th anniversary with the whole super park vibe where it seemed everyone in skiing was there. How was that? Um, that was great. I mean, if I have a whole mountain now, it's mammoth, I guess. But, so it was like perfect just to like drive in. I had all my butt, like all my friends fly in. It's like Calvin, Sam, Zayner, Pete, Kuka, like who else? A bunch of people just flew into LAX and like Ubered straight to my house. And I like come back from work and this like got, got this like chaos crew at the house and and then we just like piled into my truck and drove up there. So it was like yeah. it was just so fun, you know, like when all the friends come to California and stay in a condo yeah. and, and mess around for a week and go skiing. It was perfect. Yeah. It seemed like the the American version of Kimball Sessions. Yeah, yeah, you can say that for sure. Just a big, just a big link up. Like no schedule, no competition, just everyone having a whole week to ride and chill. Yeah, I think maybe for like the kids that were actually competing in it or whatever, there was mm -hmm. maybe more of a schedule. But for us, it was just like, here's your hotel keys, do whatever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we just like don't don't burn the hotel. Yeah, try not to. So we just like did whatever and went skiing every day. <laughs> like, and that was literally it. They were like, yeah, private park, stayed open till sunset, and uh, yeah. That's sick. It was just, it was also just, you know, just same kind of thing. Like, it's just kind of felt like the old days skiing with all your friends that you used to ski with when you were 18. And we're mm -hmm. now we're just doing the same thing, just like messing around for a week. It was perfect. Yeah. And as you said, in the streets, you're always by yourself or with your, your small crew. Yeah. And then for that, it's like the complete opposite where you're with a hundred people chilling. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like ski mountain shit. There, you know, we're all catching up. Like, what'd you do this year? What'd you do this year? Whatever, and it was sick. Yeah. And how different was it from your time being a super unknown finalist? From how it went down, and how um, you know, from what you saw from the new generation of super unknown finalists? Yeah, hard to tell because I wasn't really like in the scene of you know, like the kids that were competing. 
you know, they had their own little click or whatever. So I, you know, it's really hard for mm. me to gauge it, but I certainly didn't like, I wasn't like skiing around winter park when I was at super unknown, like watching rainville ski in front of me <laughs> like mm-hmm. that's pretty yeah. crazy i'd be so shook for one of these kids like one of these like 15 year olds trying to win super unknown they have to drop in behind rainville or something it's like yeah, come yeah. on or like or like you know dropping in behind dark or parker it's like oh what a disaster i would have been so nervous <laughs> um so i imagine the vibe was a bit different for them but it was perfect yeah. for us you know and i think it was probably meant a lot to them you know to be able to ski with that with that crowd yeah, you had some insane clips, some some hot laps follow cam. Yep. Some Brady Parent shots on thinking of a massive dub ten at the bottom. Yeah. With again some shots where you eat shit. Did I eat shit? I think I think there's some shots in the level one recap where you you eat shit on your dub ten and then everyone's at the bottom like, go again, go again. Oh man. And then you end up getting it and everyone's just hyped. Hey, dude, I always fall so much. That's why I ski alone, because no one can see this stuff. <laughs> I, fall, <laughs> I fall more than anyone. But how did... Because you told me uh, before we started recording, but that when you were younger, you would do something cool and then get hurt and be hurt for the whole season and that you yeah. had a problem with that. How yeah. did? How do you manage or, you know, how did you evolve from Keegan getting hurt every time to Keegan now breaking ribs and still going out? I mean, there's injuries you can carry on. Like there's, there's certain, some injuries you can't continue to ski. You know, you break your leg, you're not going to ski, but yeah. Um, I think at a certain point, if you just keep going, eventually I just started landing things, you know, <laughs> there was a time where I never landed anything. And now I guess, you know, you know, you, you learn how to fall and stuff like that. So, but was there a change in your approach of, or of your trick selection? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. You just learn how to fall, you know? Right. I mean, maybe there's a change in it. Like back in the day, like when you're learning how to do tricks, you know, you see kids learning how to do a cork seven or something they literally just like throw themselves off with no regard of like, I might land on my head. It's like, mm-hmm. you don't do that anymore just because you're better at skiing. It's like, you know, you know, you're going to get to your feet. You know, it's not going to be like a complete disaster once you take off the jump. Yeah, at least for me, like that's 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 out of control. <laughs> I want, or at least you don't try something that you know could end up in a disaster. Yeah, yeah. Anything I if I take off a jump, I know I'm going to get to my feet. So at least from there, yeah, you're going to be okay. So, <laughs> let's get to the the big news. Uh, the big news. You got you got a nice monster logo on your hat as we're speaking. I wore it for you, man. Congrats, dude. <laughs> Thanks, man. Congrats. Um, I think it's awesome for you. I'm stoked to get to see you getting that recognition, that support. And um, I think it's also really cool because maybe I'm wrong, but it felt like there was a big um there was a big gap of years where there wasn't a street skier getting sponsored by an energy drink. Yeah, and to me, I think you're the new, you're the latest one since like Clayton. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Because there are guys that also do streets, but you know, mainly, it's either you're a big backcountry skier and you get a Red Bull helmet, or you're a comp skier. Right. But it's so dope to see you getting that recognition because, as we said before, Keegan Kilbride is a name in skiing, not for your Olympic medal, but. Because you did street segments one after another that were top. So that's sick, dude. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, no, it means a lot. It's, uh, you know, it's not about, it, it, it's cool to see that, see it happening, I guess. And not just for me, but for like the game. I think that's what I was most stoked on, you know, aside from like anything that it does for my said career. It, I think it means more to like the actual the actual like game you know like the street scene yeah, yeah. unity itself um well it's a big statement cuz Clayton had his kind of mutiny announcement that he was a monster that was his first segment with monster in 2013 and now 10 years later it's a uh, Keegan yeah yeah was that like his announcement well 
I don't know if it was his announcement, but it was his first segment with them, you know? Yeah. Like before then, Network and Way in 86, he wasn't a monster. True. Um, yeah, no, I think it's just huge for like everyone, like any any kids skiing that, you know, that it, that, that can happen. Yeah, to me, it's crazy how long it took because you've always been that guy that was deserving of that kind of sponsorship and you've been killing it now for eight years almost putting segments after another after another uh how did that come about and what were your your thoughts like were you um kind of over it or you know not thinking that kind of deal could happen for you <laughs> no I, i don't think i was ever over it but uh we had been talking about it for a couple of years um Bishop, like Josh Bishop, who's the uh, the monster TM. I've known him forever. He's he's been in the ski industry for a while, and mm -hmm. obviously, yeah. I mean, I'm the same way, just like cocky or whatever, or like internally cocky. I would never like. So I was always like, yeah, like let's do it, you know, let's blah, you know, always trying to get on, and then um, nothing, whatever happened. But then finally, this year it did. And uh, well, tell me what can you say? Tell us what what made it happen. What was the the ticket factor for them? Yeah, for sure. Um, I was pitching this part that I'm releasing now, um, and basically, I just like made the part out of my pocket, like financially wise. You know, just pretty much completely out of pocket. Uh, Paul Dowell helped a bunch too from Talty. Like he gave me whatever, like a, a rack or two, but. Um, and then I was just kind of pitching it and I, so I pitched it to Josh and I was like, yo, you guys just want to like take this and it can be like a monster sponsor or like presented by whatever. If you give me this amount of money, then you can put it on your YouTube. And he was like, you know, this is like over the course of like two years, um, mm -hmm. and nothing happened. And then finally we were like kicking at that super known thing. And we went back through, you know, Like last day we're partying or whatever and we like went back through I like kind of just like grabbed him and we went back through the deck and he was like, Damn, yeah, this is sick, let's do this. Yeah, I think it was like a long process. I was just kind of like my whole goal was I was just gonna like try to sell this part. Kinda to Monster. But that's not something they usually do, right? It's no. more like either you're on the team or you're not. Yeah, no, this is something I completely made up in my head. Nice. <laughs> it was like It, it it it's not a thing that anyone ever does, but for some reason, I, but I thought it, I thought it might be a good play. I don't know. Well, it seems, seems like it was. <laughs> it seemed like it would work out. I don't know. And then, uh, yeah. Long story short, I suppose he was like, "Yeah, good idea. I want the part. We'll buy the part, but also I want you on the team." And I was like, "Whoa, okay." nice <laughs> like, like it went from two years of not really knowing if you wanted the part to then it's all in like let's go you're on the team yeah yeah fuck yeah yeah so that was sick and then uh yeah and then within like two or three days it was signed sealed and delivered which is dope nice what were you most stoked on getting a uh a package of monster cans or getting your million dollar check? Uh, neither of which have happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it, it, if I'm stoked on anything, it's, it's, I guess like the idea to work with or like to collaborate with guys who are kind of already rostered, like, like Brady and like Clayton. So like mm -hmm. Clayton just helped me edit that or Clayton edited, you know, I helped him edit it if anything um this new part and then for this like upcoming year you know like so they they have those two dudes just kind of like rostered as like company editors and videographers and shit like that so now i can just kind of try to pitch these collaborations in a more like professional manner and actually make these things like viable mm -hmm. you know these projects actually or like have have them actually mean a bit more you know mm -hmm and happen with a legitimate budget and right, right. money that isn't coming out from your step paycheck. <laughs> yeah. And also, well, let's get into it. You're dropping probably 
it's hard to analyze afterwards, but my first gut reaction, it's probably the part that got me the most hyped watching it since Clayton's mutiny segment. First off. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's the goal. Dude. <laughs> good job, man. That that made I, I texted you, I think, and I just said I got a big smile on my face. Yeah, that's awesome. Good to hear. And it's that much more insane to me that like it's kind of full circle that the person editing your project is Clayton. Yep. How is it having him to to uh to do the post production of your video? <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's not like we didn't see that coming, you know. That was that was kind of the idea behind it. It was like I set out to Clayton's been my friend for a while, so I was like, I'm I mean I set out to burn him. Mm-hmm. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna like try to one up anyone, it's it's always like kind of those guys who are like my friends now, you know, like Cam Riley's right. downstairs. <laughs> and, right. But I mean you had worked with Cam Willis before, so it could have been Cam. Like what made it go to Clayton? I mean, the monster thing had a big part of it, but I think, I mean, I've always thought that Clayton was like a really talented editor and I thought that he could bring a lot to our project just in terms of vision and, and where he wanted to go. You know, when you look at your own footage so many times, like so much, I've been editing my own part for two years now. It's like, Mm -hmm. I got so many different versions, you know, from like a David Bowie to a young thug to a like, whatever. It's like, dude, I got so many cuts and, uh, you know, or like from 12 minutes to two minutes, it's like, I, I mm-hmm. and I didn't know where to go to with it. So then I just go to Clayton's house now and we open the hard drive kind of on a blank slate. And he's like, and we, you know, we sit down and make, and make a version and then make another version and then another version. And he's, and we're sitting there and the whole time it's like, I want to make this better than anything I've made before. And, and he hasn't edited skiing since his last skiing part, <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. he's, so he's on like a totally fresh template um, of, you know, what he works on, what he edits is like swimsuit commercials and shit like that. So he's yeah. take, or like, you know, you know what I mean? Like Calvin Klein underwear commercials or something like that's what he's used to editing. So, so now we just have like such a fresh perspective. Um, and I think it showed. It's crazy how it looks straight out of a stepped movie. Word. But in, in the best sense, you know? Kind of, though. I mean, we, yeah. It's it's Clayton's editing style. And, I mean, you went so big and with such a good, you know, your skiing is so great that it is on that step, prime step level. Yeah, I mean, so, like, Ethan Timmons and Cam Willis, like, they shot the whole thing. And those dudes, like, we're, we're certainly on a mission to, like, like, we weren't fucking around behind the camera shooting this thing, like. Mm-hmm. those those two crushed it like stepped up big time um, yeah exactly probably your best skiing to date or you know hard to say because you've always been so good but super good skin super good filming super good editing like top notch man congrats hell yeah thank you 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 chose to name it video part what's the story behind that <laughs> um <laughs> yeah yeah kind of kind of a satirical connotation i guess like just so many uh so many ski movies and stuff like that just like a that we were watching just end up being like a jumble of filler clips and and maybe like a cool one mixed in and blah 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 and then we were like dude let's just make like a like a real deal no one makes video parts anymore like no mm-hmm. one's making video parts what, what's going on um and on some old head shit we were like let's just let's just call this thing video part you know <laughs> and in my mind it's like all right this is like the first of a trilogy now so now we're oh, on shit <laughs> oh shit yeah. yeah that's a big claim yeah so I mean, that's well. the that's the godfather one and then you're gonna step <laughs> it up with godfather part two no i mean it'd be a big claim if i actually put a number one in front of it we didn't do that but you just said it though <laughs> yeah i did I did. So that that's your next goal is like one up it, yeah. 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 Damn. Yeah, I mean what else? There's nothing else, but I'm stoked <laughs> to hear you say it. Yeah. I'm stoked to hear that. Hell yeah. Yeah. So let's rewind back. Uh you blew up in twenty sixteen winning Super Unknown and people saw you coming, you know. 
people saw you coming in or before then. And 2017, you dropped Eat the Guts with an incredible segment that people still remember to this day. Also, banger opening segment in Habit with Level 1. Then 2018, full segment in Zigzag. Also 2018, bronze medal in X Games Real Ski. 2019, full banger segment in Romance. Then, two-year project Slim to None with Cam Willis, where you do park, backcountry, and street. What led you uh, after that, after last time we talked? What was the plan? You went into a two-year project. What was the, um, the plan or the thinking or, you know, where were you at at that point? Because that was back to back to back of many years going at it all in. Yeah. Um, so the Slim to None thing, it, it wasn't a two-year project. But no? it was just the fact that, I, yeah, I, I had like gotten hurt, so I didn't ski for mm. a year. Okay, I thought it was a two-year. No, I like hurt my knee, and then I didn't ski for a year. Um, and then we shot that. And then, yeah, so like going in, we did make this this current one a two-year part. Partly just because like I, with a work schedule, like some crazy stuff I was doing in Maine work-wise, I, I couldn't really shoot as much as I want to. And then we did, and then we got some clips and I was like, damn, like, I just want to sit on this. And we kind of got into this mentality of like, you know, like, I'm just going to do, I just want to make like the best part that's been made, at least for like, I want to make like the best video part possible. Mm -hmm. um, and no one's telling me to release it. You know, there's no like sponsors pushing me to release it. Mm -hmm. I think, and there's no like ego po like pushing me to release it. Like I don't yeah. care. Like I, it's okay for me to. So there was no, uh, there was no pressure like on the K two side to say like, hey, are you dropping something this year? Or no, dude, they were down. They were like, I think you know, I sent them what I was sitting on and and explained to them what I'm gonna do about it. You know, explained to them and like showed them the features that I'm gonna go hit this upcoming year or whatever and and. Um, there wasn't any pushback, but I definitely had to like explain, you know, like, dude, if you just give me another couple months, like it's going to be legit and they were down. So that's what I did, <laughs> you know, nice. it was worth it for me to just sit on and, and, uh, and make it the best it can be. And in my mind, like if, if I didn't have any friends and if I truly didn't know any, like I would never release, I would just keep, I'd keep filming for another 12 years and. <laughs> and, and then and then put something out you know but yeah you gotta release i always feel like that's the i never did two-year projects and on one hand i always kind of i don't know if it's because that's what the format we're used to but it's like i feel like there's enough time in one season and you know when the season ends you kind of want to do something with that mm -hmm. and also as a filmer i'm always kind of scared that well what happens if you kind of step up your game the year after and then you're just throwing what you had the year before in the garbage. Like you kind of wasted your time a bit the year prior. Huh. Um, did that happen to you where you kind of were hyped on some shots and then went year two and kind of dismissed those shots? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, there was a big focus to make every spot timeless, you know, like w w I would never set out to do something that I think could be recreated or one-upped within a singular season you know right i think as we set out to do any clip that we shoot we set out to make it timeless right that's the goal and anyway <laughs> the only thing that that led me to that question is that you posted a tease on instagram like a year ago where you do a no spress 180 on to a rail to stall and yeah. that's not in your part. So I was like, oh, how much did he actually cut out? Or Because that shot looked sick from the well, teaser foot. Abs absolutely, there are clips that we cut. Like, right. There are definitely, I mean, there's like 10 or 12 clips that we cut that Damn. will never be seen. But it's not because of like a one year to another thing. It's just because like they're, they don't go hard enough or whatever. Like yeah. that nose butter or like, you know, that nose butter thing up. It was just like, that was it. And then I dropped into like this big tranny and then like ollied mm -hmm. over a thing. And I guess there was a clip. So but... in your part, you got 19 shots, which is, I think, the perfect number. Around 20 is perfect. Not too short, not too long. 
Right. So I think it's worth it to cut these things. Like just to, so yeah. we, when we were just cutting it down, we were just like nitty gritty kind of like, I just want it to be the most hard hitting, like stomping style cut. Like no bullshit. I think around 20 is the perfect number. Cause it, it's just like for a Hollywood movie, like you don't want it to be an hour long, but you also don't want it to be two hour 50. Like, you know, th there's a perfect middle where, yeah, to me, like if you're writing something, like you don't want any words in the script that, or like you don't want any words in a book that don't need to be there, you know? Mm -hmm. So just get them out, get them out of there. <laughs> you know? I don't. How, how hard was the process of cutting those 12 shots? Not hard for me. So it was clear, like those are in, those are out? Yeah. And it just, once we decided on the style of the video. If I wanted to make like a 12 minute video with all of our, you know, we have hours and hours of footage, like, right. And if I wanted to make a 12 minute cut with a gang of failure, that'd be nice. You know, you could sneak those in on some like weird transition thing. And maybe I'll make, maybe I will make like a long cut, but I just wanted to make this just like a two minute action pack, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. um, just kind of bang over the head cut. So I totally did. You said the you said that word a couple times in the episode old head. Uh, oh, have I? Uh. I think so. Well, I think that's a great way to put it. Where it's I would call it old school now that we're we're getting older, meaning that there's very few bells or is there any? There's not really bell shots. There's not really lifestyle shots of any sort. It's just banger one after the other nonstop for three minutes. Yeah, I mean, we knew that we're not going to put any shuffling or like, yeah. you know, spot building or like very few things like that. Um, there weren't any uh, bail shots that warranted to be there? No, there's some good ones. We put one okay. in. We put one in towards the end, I think. But Yeah, on, on the closeout where you, you fall from the sky? Yeah, um, but every every clip that's in there is like, it's meant it's meant to be there yeah yeah and uh and the framing is is exactly how we wanted it and and there's nothing in there that you know that we don't need or that you don't need how much did clayton influence that in terms of helping you choose what needs to be there what needs to be cut was that something that you kind of knew on your own or was that like a collab process with him um no yeah i think we worked together on it like i came with that vision for sure of just kind of I kind of wanted to put together like a no nonsense piece and and that's right up his alley so kind of like all right let's get into this there's like you know there's the movie that you write there's a movie that you shoot and then there's the movie that you edit and they're all different and then there's the movie that people see and <laughs> it's like <laughs> so like you can't get too caught up and like you know once you're in the bay like once you're at it once you're cutting it up it's like this is what this is what it needs to be mm -hmm. uh, we we went out there with just a, a reckless vision to do some heavy shit, you know, and that's yeah. what the video came out to be. So that's nice when it works out like that. So 19 shots, pretty much all bangers. Tell me how that came about during two seasons where you're going left and right, you do some competitions, you work, uh, your filmer Cam Willis also works on other stuff. Um how did it come to life? How did you guys handle filming that all? Cam Willis is responsible for it, for sure. <laughs> Was he, he driving you? No, I mean, he and he and Ethan Timmons just wouldn't let me quit skiing. Um, and myself included, I suppose. But, you know, we we're always just like, dude, we can we can make some some good stuff here. Um, so then we would just, you know, stay in touch. And anytime, like whenever we had free time, we'd go somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd get my truck and drive somewhere and then fly cam or fly Ethan out there and, and meet me. And, and then we just do it, you know, just us two or us three or us, you know, maybe Chili would come, but mm -hmm. yeah. It's not as if you're all three living in the same town so you can hit a spot a certain day. And then I'm guessing it's, it was more trip based, right? Yeah, I mean, it's still only, like, two or three trips, I guess. Like, I mean, it's a two-year part, but we only shot, like, two or three trips. That's crazy. Yeah, we did, like, a Boston trip and then a Duluth trip and then 
<laughs> and then I dragged Ethan back out to Duluth for a couple of days. Just because, I mean, once we left, I just knew that there's, you know, you know you have a couple spots. So I was like, all right, guys, like, we're going here. These things need to happen. You're going to come. <laughs> it's crazy when, when you trim it down to to that. It's a quality over quantity. Right. Like, yeah, we're not, like, just out there messing around. I mean, you got, we go out there with, like, a pretty certified spot list and... We not like you know. I know what I'm hitting. You know, I'll drive 30 hours to do that cork set. Like, to just that one mm -hmm. seven clip. It's like left main, drove 32 hours, flew Ethan out there, got that clip, drove home. Just because it was like really? the end of the year, and I was like, dude, I need to do this right now. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I was just like in northern Maine, couldn't sleep, and I was like, there's snow on the ground, right? There's a bit like tiny bit of snow right there i know there is i just saw a live cam like we got to go do this and there was, like, was nowhere else where you could have done that quirk sev no i just i couldn't get that i couldn't get that that gazebo you wanted that spot. i needed to i needed to do that yeah <laughs> yeah but it worked out i mean we rolled up like we rolled up and it was just like boom it's crazy how close your head goes to the the ceiling in that one oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah we kind of see you popping and you're you almost do a shoulder tap yeah i did like i had to do like a mork seven like a like a misty cork you know like a someone who doesn't know how to do a proper cork set you know like i had to like relearn how to do cork sets after <laughs> that because i like dropped my shoulder all in so much and that was a good one that's crazy dedication i'm just thinking like 30 hours going in you're just hyped to because you're on a mission How's the 30 hour drive back home after that? I love driving. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. To me, it doesn't seem crazy. Like, to me, it doesn't seem that crazy at, at all. But it seems like for you, Americans, those long drives are more common or more mellow. It's like 30 hours seems like a fucking long drive to me. It is. It's completely insane <laughs> to, to do something like that. <laughs> but, uh, and I recognize that, but. I, I love it, you know. The drive back was definitely like more uncomfortable. You know, I was probably sore. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, I'm just so stuck, so used to staying home to Film Street that, you know, I think I saw ABM for his real ski. He drove to Gaspésie, which is like a northern part of Quebec, maybe eight hours from his place. And I was like, oh shit, he drove eight hours for that. Mm. But then when you compare it to you guys, it's nothing. No, I mean, eight hours, eight hours is a lot. You know, like I just love driving. You just got to do it. You know, when you're, th when you can't stop thinking of a spot, you just got to go shoot. You got to go shoot it. So. so when the video starts, the intro is super stylized. We kind of see you hanging around in LA. Then there's some studio shots kind of teasing and showing the monster hat. Tell me what's the, the very few shots that we see outside of skiing. What were the thoughts behind it? I think the video kind of plays in a fun way where it's like we, I mean, it kind of starts off. It's like it's thinking about skiing and then just some, some heavy hit and skiing and then goes back to daydreaming. I, I love the opening shot with the, the drone Yeah. where I think drones get a lot of hate in skiing and I, I, I get where it's coming from, but I love the intro just showing the trees and it kind of, it's kind of two types of shots blending into one kind of a just a shot of you know the the sky that merges into an in-run shot i love that yeah it's kind of set in the scene it's like that's what that's what street skiing is you know that that initial shot that you see from the sky it's like you see the rail you see the outrun you see the guy on the winch pulls all the way yeah. into me grabbing the winch it's like that's it just encapsulates the entire like scene so well and we had to like stabilize that so it's not like a bumblebee shot coming in but yeah, I think that shot's perfect. I think it's like a good way to slow it down and open it up and, and show it. And when I was saying, to me, it's a really close to Clayton's Mutiny segment in your level of skiing and the whole production value of it all. And then the opening shot to me is so similar where mm. in Clayton, it's him gapping onto a rail super fast. Mm. And for you, it's kind of the same thing. It's also a super long down rail and you're doing a switch tails two on, but it looks like you're going fast. Mm, yeah, we're going fast. It's funny that that 
ended up being the opener and it worked so well right there because I was that was like a Clayton vision right there mm. where in my mind that was like that was in the middle of the part on every every cut that I made that was always kind of like stuck right in the middle right um, it was never an opener but he just saw that and he saw the tail press and he was like dude that's that's the opener like that's how you have to open it and then it made a lot of sense where it's like you know that just shows off like the my style of skiing really well and it's not no bullshit around it it's just like that's you don't want to open it up with like some like jumping off a roof shot and then kind of like scare everyone it's like just just ease them into like all right this is like a keegan part you know and i love the you know it's tech it's a switch to one but also it's you know you're someone who goes fast and big and i think that's super keegan going super fast into it with the tail press big style that's such a good way to start it so yeah your part starts and it's a lot of cool um ways of approaching stuff like you do a lip one on three out to a ledge which is something i've never seen in skin really cool way to go about a trick um you said that you had all your spots kind of predetermined before shooting it so you kind of there was no messing around like coming to a new town and finding a spot it was all like a spot list and you knew what you wanted on them yeah it's funny though that lip one was completely out of the blue <laughs> but it's sick yeah yeah no it was like pouring rain and uh yeah the lip one was out of the blue and it ended up being like i i thought i did that clip and i thought it was like trash and then watching it back a couple times i, I definitely kind of started to mess with it I liked yeah. it. Yeah. So what was the initial thought? Was it not to do that spot or was it a different trick on that spot? No, we had gotten kicked out of the spot that I wanted to be at. And then we were driving home and I was like, oh, look at that thing. I think I can do this on that thing. And then, but it was like pouring rain and everyone was mad at me. And <laughs> you know, I, made get, I made him get out there in the rain and, and film this thing. So it was just like natural in run. And, and then we did it and it was sick. Yeah. Yeah, well, th there's a lot of good things that ha happen to improvise spots. Also, yeah, it's easy to get it's easy to get like depressed when you're just like driving through low mass after being kicked out and it's pouring rain and the snow is melting, <laughs> and Keegan's telling you to get out of the car and put your expensive camera in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I'm out filming, I'm always on a mission to at least get something. So, like, mm -hmm. I'd much rather if we get kicked out, do a second spot that is less nice and just say, well, let's get something. And if it doesn't end up in the cut, that's okay. But let's, you know, I'm not the type that is like, oh, just let's go home and quit. Well, we got out, we're in the streets. Let's figure out something. Normally I'm like the opposite where it's like, let's save our energy and not just like go out there and shoot some bullshit. Like let's actually just go home, figure out what's going to be useful and go do that. Not just like go to a weird spot and get a clip we're never going to use. Mm-hmm. But we did that that night, and it worked. <laughs> so whatever, you know. How well did it go for you for spots uh, in terms of kick out, in terms of uh, getting hurt? Really well. Yeah, I don't think we got kicked. Out. I don't think we got kicked out of any spot. I'm sure we did, but I can't think of anything. No, yeah, I think I think it was all pretty smooth. But that kind of ties into the like not we're just we don't have a gang of 12 kids out there messing around in <laughs> some park it's like we got three of us out there doing a specific <laughs> job that's just what we're doing you know if the, if you tell us to leave we're gonna leave you know we're grown men you know okay i agree we're doing something silly we're gonna get off your property <laughs> <laughs> sorry you know i will be back but for now i'm sorry yeah that's um that's a big thing for me also like being a small crew in the streets is way more work but it's also way better to not get kicked out because, as you said, you're not getting noticed as much. There's not people smoking joints beside. It's like in the past years, it was I'm filming in a corner. Matt is dropping in and there's maybe someone else at the spot. Like a lot of spots, we were only two. Like me filming, him skiing. We get our shot. We leave. No, like messing around. Yeah, it's it's a that's a much better approach in my mind. That's, you know, so many of these clips, it was just strictly ethan and i you know and you know natural drop in or whatever it's like just me and e-money out there with a camera getting it done yeah. i'll do it i'll do it two or three times for different angles and that's just what we're gonna do and then we're gonna go home and it's just me and e-money in the airbnb and 
No one's messing with us. <laughs> you know, no outside influence, no internet. It's perfect. Another shot that I love from your part, and again, not to to uh, go too much again on the mutiny comparison, but I have to do it. Yeah. Clay Clayton had an awesome shot in his part where he does a wall ride to wall ride. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah. He does a wall ride on the left and then drops into a second wall ride on the right. Yeah, of so course. Like it was kind of the first one or the nicest ones. I think it was the first one wall to wall. Yeah, and then for a couple of years, people trying to emulate that, but it, it really never was as, as dope as Clayton made it. No, it will never be. Because if, if you see that spot that he did that on in person too, I know that wall, I've been there so many times and it's just like so heavy. In terms That's of insane. size? Yeah, it's huge. It's way bigger than they should. They should have shot it differently. But. Yeah, well, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's always the thing with street is everything <laughs> yeah. people see looks half the size of what it is in real life. To my point, I think you did the best one since he did it. It's different. It's a different type of spots, but it's so sick where you drop in from a roof, do a tranny wall ride into a wall ride into another wall. Looks mm -hmm. like a... It's written auditorium. I don't know what that is. Is that at a college or something? Yeah, it's like a on top of a gym or something, like a, on top of a gymnasium at a high school or something. <laughs> something silly like that. That but, was dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, drop it in. I mean, you're like 60, 70 feet up off the, off the ground. And that first wall, like if I was a foot to the right, dropping in on that, it would have been <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but that didn't happen. And that was great. That was, again, that was a spot where it was just me and Ethan and uh, and a ladder. And he was like, dude, don't don't go up there. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't do this. But it ended up working. Because, dude, you went big on that part. And again, does that ever influence your, your thought process when you're at top of that roof being like, what the fuck am I doing here? I got to work on Monday. No, if I thought about that, I wouldn't be doing that shit. You know, I mean, when you're... That's why I like doing it. It's like clears your mind. Like there's nothing you don't think about anything else. It's like you ever watch that 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 Mike Tyson video where he's like what he's talking about how he's like walking into the ring, you know, he's like I'm lacing up my gloves, I'm confident, I'm confident, but I'm scared to death of like the other guy. You know this video? Like the most like hype video ever, but um, you need to send me it. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Um no, yeah, you're scared of it, you're confident, but if you don't know that you can do it, like, mm -hmm. no no part of me ever thought that I was going to fall on that, you know right. what I mean? Well, it's like, you, can't, you can't think of that, or if you think yeah. of that, you shouldn't hit it. Well, that's what I mean, yeah, if I was thinking, if I was thinking about, like, work, or, or like, some weird shit like that, it's like, yeah. no, dude, like, no, you're up there, and it's like, this shit's easy, I'm dropping in, all good. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's something that I've seen a lot through the years is, People, as they get older, they, they get to a certain point where they can still do it, but they just don't want to take on those risks. You know, they'll choose features with less consequences, let's say. Yeah, as soon as you get to that point, you stop doing it. Mm -hmm. For me, as soon as I get to that point, I'm not going to, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I'm out <laughs> of there. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to go out there like half ass and shit like that. And then again, some, a lot of revisiting classic spots from minnesota that cork sev we talked about that line with the rail to uh to on to switch yeah something we've seen a bunch of times but that it's really cool to have your own sauce on it a lot of tech stuff back three swap lip four on switch tails four on yeah get those out of the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah. get them off the checklist and then yeah also blend that's what i love about the part is you got those tech shots, but then after that, you hit a long down rail where you could have done tricks on it, and you just do a super nice grab that you hold on all the way through, and you know that's enough. That's that's what good shots are made of in good parts. It's not always been to win. Yeah, I thought so too. I mean, how it's played in the part too, like that came from some Nigel shit, or like just if you watch some like heavy hitting skate parts, like four back to back to back to back fisheye clips where you switch sides on each clip it's like that's mm -hmm. that's king shit you know yeah. <laughs> like from each from just from each side of the takeoff back to back to back to back it's with the fish it, it just goes so hard and 
And yeah, that that down row, it's like, all right, what am I going to do? A 630 or something? No one needs to see me do that. Like, let's just, let's do something that feels good and 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 add some flavor to the part. It kind of steps up all the way through with long rails and bigger features. But at the end, you really hit a spot where you go on full cam Riley mode. Yeah. Yeah, the, the last one. The big gap you have to wall ride. I don't know if that's in Boston. You have a lot of scary spots. What was the one that scared you the most during that? Honestly, probably that reader at that wall ride you're talking about. That was yeah. probably it's, how scary. are you coming in? Are you coming like face facing the wall or kind of in an angle? Coming in at like this weird angle. And it's like it was really sketchy. Yeah. That was really that was bad. That was a scary that was a scary one. But and it and it plays exactly what it is, you know. There's a top angle of it that we could like showcase, maybe a little bit of like the scarier side of it, but we chose not to. Just it, it, I didn't think it was needed, but yeah, that was bad. Cam Cam Willis had like had like the had like this doctor on on like speed dial like ready uh, as he's filming that bottom angle. He was like he, Cam was pretty scared. He was like, "Don't ever do that to me again." That was like terrifying. But it it was like second try and. You know, it's great. <laughs> Dude, I, I would have been superstitious about that. I would have told him like, put the phone away. Like that's kind of. Bad I didn't. Luck. Know, I didn't know he was doing that. He told me afterwards. <laughs> yeah. it, that was that was at like four thirty in the morning too. It was like or like you know that was sunrise. It was like middle of the yeah. It was like middle. We built that in the middle of the night. I can't believe we got away with that. It was. That was yeah. I can't believe we got away with that. Because it's a busy spot yeah it's just right out in the open like people have looked at that cam riley actually had looked at that a bunch of times and he was like he was shocked that we got away with that so nice and then big big close out in the type of approach i wouldn't expect the close out of the rail after that is a big ledge mm -hmm. that merges with also a rail Yeah, it's like double close out. Tell me about that spot because that's fucking huge. That's the only bail shot you put in the part, and it really kind of gets you ready for how big and gnarly that spot is. So I guess good choice on putting that one out there. Yeah, that was. Per I wish it wasn't so sunny, so sunny that day. It's like so bright, but that spot was sick. Yeah, it's it's really scary. It's like sketchy hitting concrete ledges when it's that warm. It ended up, it was supposed to be colder and it ended up being like 40 degrees and sunny. So like sliding concrete is pretty sketch and you're like mocking in and then I ended up catching and like catching that close out, just flying off. But that was a classic Keegan and Ethan where I had to do it two times for like both the make shots. You know, if you watch like the bottom angle, you'll, you'll see that there's no fisheye filmer where he was standing. So there's two, there's actually like two makes on that, which is sick. Oh, Were you, what's your, your thought when the filmer asks you to do it a second time? Are you like, dude, let's just stick with the one we have? Oh no, that was my idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, and which one is the first one? Fish eye. Okay. And I was like, we got to get a bottom angle of this. Let's go. And everyone else was like, are you sure, dude? Because, <laughs> <Like, laughs> uh, you know, we're rolling around. We just had like some random homie from Duluth who we didn't even know running the winch. And uh, he saw me fall one time and he was like, this is so crazy. Like, I don't want to do this at all. <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I was like, no, it's okay, man. It's going to be okay. Just just pull me one more time. <laughs> <laughs> he was so shook. He was so shook. The bottom angle is a great choice. The top angle shows the closeout well of how mm -hmm. sketchy it is, but the bottom angle just shows the size better. Yeah, yeah, it was worth it. And then to close it off, One of the gnarliest shots I've had. Again, going full Cam Riley mode. <laughs> Tell me about that one. Where is it? What happened? How did you freaking choose to step up to that size of a feature? Uh, well, if you've ever like been to that area of Minnesota, you've driven by that rail. And mm. uh, like I was talking to Kai Krippella yesterday. And he was just, I, he was so gassed up. I sent him the shot too. And he was like, damn, like when he was filming with MSP or something, he used to call that the, like the, the fantasy spot or something or like the fantasy or like the dream rail or some, some funny shit like that. And, and, uh, and then Cam Riley hit that in his real street, but just as the dub kink, he just hit it as a down flat down. 
like mm. dropped in, like dropped in from the right. stairs and then just hit it as a down flat down. And I mean, I've been the I've I've driven past it. I've been driving past that thing for like six years, and then uh, and I just I got it in my mind like two summers ago, and I was like, all right, I gotta I gotta slide this I gotta slide this thing, and then you know once you get to the top, then you start building it. <laughs> it's like it's on now. You know, there's no there's no going back. There's no going back. But it it was definitely pretty funny. You know, like getting yourself gassed up for a spot like that you're just doing everything to make sure it's going to be okay and and it was and it was fine and it, it was just funny like once we got it i got back home and i sent cam like a screenshot of just me like getting on the rail like you know like off top so you could tell it it like i did the whole quad yeah and just sent him like a blurry screenshot <laughs> he calls me like so pissed off <laughs> he's like so he was so fired up though it was cool for that type of feature if you fall down from the beginning, it's one hell of a drop that can potentially <laughs> hurt you a lot. What's your your stance going in? Are you like kind of tail pressing to, you know, that if you go off, you go off in the stairs? Like, what's your approach? Or are you going like as if there was no gap? Yeah, I mean, falling off on the stairs was really shitty too. Like, because mm. you, you end up going so fast at the bottom, and it's like almost more dangerous. Um. I did that like a couple times and trying to like ride out of that is just like so bad. So, so bad. And then if you fall off the other side, you just break both your ankles and, and maybe some more. So you had no, no bad fall? No, no. Let's go. Yeah. I fell off like once, but I'd already, I just knew, I mean, if you know how to slide around, it's like, you know, I knew I could get through like the first part of it. And then if I fall off after that, it's like, I'll just try not to get hurt. <laughs> you know? Um, but no, it was, it was honestly like pretty chill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend doing it though. How many tries do you think it took? Not many. Like, yeah. And that's a spot you can't try too many times, you know? It's like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I bet Ethan could tell you better, but I'd say maybe like six or something. Once I, once I locked in, I was like, that's, that's it. You know, that's. Once you get through the down, flat down, it's like, you're going to do it. So It's as if you know that you don't have the luxury of messing up. So your body knows that, you know, it can be a 40 try battle. So just get it now. Yeah, that's a that's a big part of hitting street is getting getting yourself to that point. Like, how do you get rid of the 150 tries in your head? Like, mm -hmm. And it's possible. It's like very possible. And that kind of plays into like a lot of other things you can do in life. It's just like, get rid of those things. And now is the time do it now. And as soon as you put like your whole self into that, then you get to the end and it's like, well, that was pretty friggin' easy. <laughs> just do that every time, you know? But yeah. And to end off the, the part, I love how, again, you don't really show that many bells. There's only one and it's a gnarly one. And then the only kind of emotional side is after that make where, you kind of just onch yourself, kind of breathing yeah. it out. Yeah, man. I think that's my favorite part because obviously, like after that, it was, you know, as funny as the stuff is, it was like that's the feeling of street skiing, and I'm so happy that Cam continued to roll the camera on that and zoomed in right there because, like, that is anyone that's ever hit a hand round. It's like as much as you can joke about it, it's like that is the feeling that you're going for. You slide that rail, and then it's just like. Whew, like there's no words, you know, you just like bend over and you're just like, man, you're like so happy. <laughs> you know, it's like you couldn't give you couldn't care about anything else at that point in time. What um, is it more? Is it more satisfaction, like being stoked or relief? Yeah, it's a bunch of di I guess it's a bunch of different stuff. It's like I knew if I slid that rail, it would be like cool, I guess. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I got people think I'm People are going to think I'm cool because I slid this rail <laughs> like sick, but it's not really that too. It's like, uh, it's part of that, but then it's part of like, damn, I'm glad this is over. But then probably more of that feeling is just comes from like you pushing your individual self or whatever, like mm -hmm. to overcome something like that. And it's like as full as like foolish as it is, you know, it's like, holy shit, we actually did that. Like push the limits. You knew you could do it. You did it. That's over with. Wow. Nice. <laughs> like, okay, let's go get a slice of pizza or something and fucking go home. Let's Parts go. done. Like, video's done. Yeah, that was the last handrail I've hit. Is that the 
the shot you're the most stoked on in the project? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's clearly like the standout or whatever, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I don't think there is like a a shot that I'm actually the most stoked on. I try not to like think about it that way. I think about it more as like a whole. Yeah. Well, let's say as a whole, did you accomplish what you wanted to being like doing your best stuff to date? Do you feel like you've done that? Yeah. Yeah. This is by far this is, be this is the best like video I've ever made for sure. And to, and to my opinion, same also like you, you've, you've outdone yourself and it's hard to do because you've set a really high standard for yourself. So man, big ups. Word. Well, next, next, uh, November, we'll be saying the same thing. So that'll be cool. Dude. I'm hyped. <laughs> yeah. So I told people that the King Keegan Kilbride was coming on and they had a couple questions for you. So first off, we have Laurent Olivier Martin who asks, whose style did you grow up trying to emulate? Oh, everyone. I mean, everyone. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that stylist from Japan who just says like, He's got a famous quote, like Yamamoto or something. Famous fashion guy from Japan. Where he's just, he just says like, copy, 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 copy. And then at the end, you find yourself. Mm. And I think that's how I grew up skiing. It's just like, I was just biting people's styles left and right. You know, but certainly for a time, it was strictly Clayton mixed with Adam DeLorme. And that's still how I want to ski, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and now those dudes are like two of my best friends and it's like weird, but I think eventually I found myself or whatever the hell I'm trying yeah. to say, but yeah, probably AD and uh, Clay, but also like Shay, Shay Flynn, probably. Holden Baldassi asks, if you could only ski one resort slash park for the rest of your life, where would it be? Sugarloaf, Maine. Just because that's where you grew up? No, well, yeah, part of it, but no, I think it's like the best place to go skiing. Damn, they got to get you on some ambassador status. No, I'll buy a ticket. Really? Fuck, that's dedication. <laughs> that's love. Yeah. Ryan Bruninghouse, what spot scared you the most? Probably that redirect, that big wall, just because it was like, we thought about it too much. It took like a long, long time to build. And whenever you build something for that long, that means you're staring at it the whole time. Maybe your friends are just pushing shovels and stacking pallets, but you're fucking staring at this thing. <laughs> you know? So that was pretty scary. What was it that was scaring you? Was it the gap or, you know, the height, the redirect? The speed. Like if you look at the clip, there is no snow on that wall. So like mm. we pushed that entire uh, landing pad or whatever the hell you want to call it. So like if you look, you know, if you went, if you overshot it, like you're just going straight to the ground. And if you right. undershot it, you're going straight to the ground. So there's like, I somehow landed in like the perfect spot and the only spot that you could from like that angle. And then, you know, I mean, as simple as it is, it's, you never, you just, it, it's a spot where you just like truly, it's not like grinding a rail. You just like truly have to trust that your instincts are going to put you in the perfect place on the wall. Yeah. And you just like, you know, succumb to that shit. <laughs> it's like you you fire yourself in there and let, let it go. And yeah, then it works. And then also from Ryan Bruninghaus, what has been your favorite street spot? Oh, also Ryan. I think this kid's from Maine. I'm pretty sure Ryan. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be. He plugged yeah. us with the kid that was running the winch in Duluth because he went to this kid, Ryan. I'm pretty sure like went to college in Duluth. So thank you for that. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, yeah, it is dope. Um, sorry, what was the question, though? What has been his favorite street spot? Probably that redirect. <laughs> <laughs> so the scariest and the most fun? Yeah, that's what I like, for sure. More than the, the closing one? Or the closing one was no fun, it was just relief? Yeah, that wasn't that fun. <laughs> <For> <laughs> Going out afterwards was more fun. But... The pizza was good? Mm-hmm. Actually, the pizza sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, last one from Ryan Bruninghouse. What the fuck was going through his head doing a six off of that huge drop at a stadium in Duluth for real ski? Six off? Yeah. Oh, oh, I remember. Yeah, not much was going through my head. No. Um, 
it was like some real ski stuff. And I was like, I got to do a big spin off a big rail, <laughs> you know, like some real, uh, <laughs> asshole shit. But, um, uh, Austin Torvenin gave me that spot and he did a front two off that spot. And so I was just like being a, you know, like a little cocky kid. I was like, I'm doing a real ski thing. I'm going to do like a 360 more than you are. <laughs> so then I, that's what I did off that spot. And it was pretty chill, honestly. But it looked like one fucking big rail. Yeah, it was huge. It was huge. That hurt a lot. That was like one of the ones where you land and it like you, you're still hurt, even though you landed it perfectly. So Brendan Hart asks, what was it like hitting that 120-foot jump at Mammoth in 2017? Oh, that was a dream. That jump was a dream. It was built so well. It was like, yeah, I mean, I could have been hitting a 40-foot jump the way that thing was built. It was perfect. You're just floating. You're going really fast into it, but after that, you're just floating. It was so perfect, like zero impact landing as long as you hit your feet. It's perfect. Was it scary? It's well built, so you feel safe, but then it's still a freaking huge thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure I was a little scared at the time, but you hit it once, and then it's no big deal. Yeah, I think, right? I don't know. You see someone else go, and it's like, let's just. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah. I've never hit a hundred and twenty foot jump, and I never will. So you tell me. <laughs> no, I think if I, I think if I was scared, I wouldn't have done it. You know. So right. I can't imagine I was that scared. Well, then there's the whole peer pressure thing. Also, you're at a shoot. It's not as if you're going to not hit it. Yeah, true. Especially if Parker's there, you're going to do it at that age. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I was probably just peer pressured into it. <laughs> I probably <laughs> didn't want to hit it at all. Uh, no one wants to hit it, but everyone ends up doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Chili didn't want to hit it, but he ended up guinea pigging it. Oh, shit. Yeah. Have you seen that clip? So oh, I think good. I've seen it. He came up there just to like drink beers and hang out and he had no interest in hitting this jump. And then he ended up guinea pigging it and overshot by like 60 feet and like blew out so hard. And then and did he get hurt? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Fuck. then he didn't, hit, and then he didn't hit it again. And then we all sessioned. <laughs> 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 it was perfect. <laughs> Last off from Ryan Bruninghouse again. Tell us about the experience filming for Eat the Guts, linking up with the Sugarbush crew and all of that here filming with those boys. That was a great time. All those guys are, I mean, they were some of my best friends at the time. You know, I grew up with most of them. Um, so it was like a super easy experience. I guess maybe from afar, it seemed like I came in on like some rogue tip and and filmed a segment with them. But in reality, I mean, like I went to high school with a lot of those kids and like we've known each other since, I mean, forever since I can remember. So it was honestly, it was, it was made to happen. And, uh, I was just the only one living in Colorado at the time. So it like seemed a little funny that I just like flew in, but I flew in and just went to Rory's house in Burlington and then went up to Quebec and fired it up with Smokey and, and they, it was sick. <laughs> Yeah, that movie really had a big impact. Like people are still talking about it, and yeah, it's cool because at the time it didn't seem. I mean, at the time, if you were there shooting it, definitely didn't seem like any impact was going to come from that. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you, if you had been sitting in the van with us, there was no impactful moments. <laughs> I can tell you that, but I shouldn't breeze over it like that. That was like some of the best times ever. But. It, it's cool that people got to appreciate it in the same way that we were able to appreciate it, you mm -hmm. know, being the ones doing it. So. So thanks a lot for coming on, Keegan. Great talking with you. Great talking with you too, man. Thanks for having me. Congrats on the, on everything. Congrats on the part. because that's one hell of a statement you just made. Not as if you needed one, but I'm hyped you did it. Hell yeah. Con congrats on the monster. Thank you, bro. Congrats on K2. Congrats on living out in California like a boss. And let's, let's give a congratulations for Harbor for staying quiet for so yeah. long. Huh? Congrats on Harbor the dog for not barking too much. <laughs> Is he going to um, have a feature in your next project? Yeah, absolutely. Pulling, pulling you into a spot like B-Dog? 
<laughs> He'll pull me into the ocean in about 10 minutes. I, I can see that. He needs to see the sand. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Um, and to close it off, you teased it with the your goals of a trilogy. What's uh, What's your plan like for this season? Yeah, without giving away too much. I mean, I got some really cool projects lined up. Um, aside from just like, we're going to want up the part that I just put out. Um, so that'll be fun. But aside from that, we're going to do like some cool kind of New England one-off style projects and, and good little company pieces. It's going to be a good, it's going to be a good year. Dope. And are you looking at a one-year project or two-year? Well, <laughs> what's the goal? The goal as of now? <laughs> the goal is to uh, make the best video I can. With no time limit. I mean, if no one's asking for a time limit, I don't care about one. So I care about quality at this point. But I do anticipate dropping one next year. Yeah, That's dope. Well, yeah. I, I like it that way. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. All right, man. Thank you. Have, have a good season. All right, you too. Cheers. So this is it for episode 45 with Keegan Kilbride. Big thanks to the sponsors, K2, Axis Board Shop, Dick Ann's Restaurants, and Planks Clothing. Also, big shout out to the patrons on Patreon. Thanks a lot for your support. Peace. Peace.